Yeah. Yeah. No yeah, way. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Abdul Kadir. Adel. Yes. Hey, what about Abega? How are you?
Un bello di tutta, non sono due. Prayer. Almighty God, who in your wisdom and goodness has appointed the offices of leaders in the parliament and the welfare of society, Amen. of all human lives upon it, and the just government of its people, we beseech you to look with your abundant favor upon us, your servant, whom you have entrusted with the performance of such important trust in this community. Let your blessings descend upon us here assembled, and grant that we may treat and consider all matters that shall come under our attention and the deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote prosperity and welfare of this region and of those whose interests you have committed to us. Amen. Item number one on the order paper, communication from the chair. Good afternoon, honorable members. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I just have a few announcements to make. One, and may, may I first remind you to mute your microphones, honorable colleague. Uh, first and foremost, I want to inform you that this morning we had a consultative meeting uh, of the commission and uh, we made some deliberations that I have asked the members of the commission to brief you about in your respective chapters. But also later in, in the evening when I get time, I will draft a communication for all of you uh, to capture in brief the discussion we had um, and how we made the decisions. So I hope that the honorable members of the commission will find the time to brief you about that. There is a microphone that is not muted yet. What is it? Can you identify the microphone that is not muted? Yes, please mute, mute your microphone. I can hear that one of the microphones is not working. So I, I just said that members of the commission will brief you in your respective chapters about the discussion or the consultative meeting we had in the morning. I also want to inform you that my immediate predecessor, uh, Right Honorable Daniel Kidega, from Uganda was involved in a, very, a, a terrible accident. I think some of you have seen that in our group chats. Uh, and uh, some members from Uganda chapter who visited him uh, informed me that although the, the accident was life-threatening, but the path to the recovery is promising. So we pray for him. We pray that the Honorable Kidega recovers fully and soon so that he can regain his full health. And I thank you, Honorable Members from Uganda Chapter, who have been visiting that speaker emeritus to see how he is doing. So, Honorable Members, I think we can proceed. Item number two on the order paper. Papers. Um, Chairperson, Committee on General Purpose. Uh, I understand that Honorable Namara is struggling with the connection. He is in touch with me. But he is someone else who has been asked to, to perform this function for him. Uh, procedure, Honorable uh, Speaker. Yes, the Honorable Adam. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and I thank you for your communication to us with regards to the Commission outcome, and we wait for, for, for the memorandum. But, Honorable Speaker, um, while we wait for your direction on the way forward, um, members, including myself, have grievances with regards to um, 
the disbursement of remuneration last week uh, was not in order. Um, we had our meeting this morning of CTI, and I can confirm that uh, a number of meetings which we duly attended and did our job were not were considered as absent or not uh, paid for. And it's not just that particular one. It's, it's the very many other uh, uh, meetings. So what's happening, Mr. Speaker, with regards to what happened to us already? We know the way forward is what you're working on. We appreciate uh, but how are our grievances being addressed? Some of us wanted to send formal communication or with, re- with regards to this, but we're waiting for today's commission outcome. Is there any brief for us? And I speak for many members, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think some other members has also been in touch. Meeting of the office of the clerk and his staff yesterday. So all those grievances must be forwarded. And the committee clerks must get involved to correct those records. So the principle is everyone should be remunerated for the meetings they attended. And we, we, are, we are supervising that with respect to those uh, communications that we already have. But even those that haven't been sent yet, please send that information and we shall deal with it. Yeah. Thank you very much, honorable members. I have a list of members who have already forwarded their records, but even those who haven't done it, please. And the committee clerk, if there is a record that you didn't put properly, you can still regularize it. It is never too late to make sure that everyone is properly handled. So that is how we can conclude that. So who has been asked by Honorable Namara to to lay? Honorable Francois. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to lay the report on the oversight activity uh, to assess the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on women in cross-border trade in the East African community, and the report is of the Nepopasi Committee. Mr. Speaker, I beg to lay. Item number three on the order paper, report of the Committee on General Purpose on the oversight activity to, to assess the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on women in cross-border trade by way of motion. The Honorable Francois, again, on behalf of the Committee Chair, General Purpose. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to present the report of the Committee on General Purpose on the oversight activity to assess the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on women in yeah, the yes, you, you, you need to move a motion, Honorable you, Francois. You, you I beg to move a motion. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move a motion uh, to present the report of the Committee on General Purpose on the oversight activity to assess the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on women in cross-border trade in the East African community. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the motion. Second, us. Honorable mm-hmm. Ambassador mm-hmm. Fatuma, Honorable nice Dr. Mdu, Honorable Kennedy, nice Honorable, nice Honorable nice Momomo, Honorable nice Sophia, nice Honorable nice Jean Claude. Nice Honorable nice Francoise, can you proceed and present the report? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Introduction. Report on the oversight activity to assess the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on women in cross-border trade in the East African community held from 25th to 28th February 2021. 1.0. Introduction. The East African Legislative Assembly, IALA, is one of the organs of the East African community established under Article 9 of the treaty for the establishment of the East African community. The treaty bestows upon the assembly three cardinal functions, legislation, oversight, and representation. In particular, the assembly largely exercises the oversight function through its committees. The Committee on General Purpose is one of the six standing committees of the East African Legislative Assembly, IALA, that is specifically charged with, among others, 
matters related to health, gender, population, and the budget. Annex 5F of the Rules of Procedure of the Assembly provides for the specific functions of the, co the Committee on General Purpose, which include but are not limited to oversight of the work of the EAC and the sectoral committees emanating from the following provisions of the treaty, though, though not listed or limited to them. A. Chapter 16, Cooperation in the Development of Human Resources, Science and Technology. B. Chapter 21, Health, Social and Cultural Activities. C. Chapter 22, Enhancing the Role of Women in Social Economic Development. And D. The Pre-Budgeting Function. 2.0, Background. According to Article 121 of the Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community, partner states commit, committed to work together to enhance the role in social economic development. The partner states recognize that women make a significant contribution towards the process of social economic transformation and sustainable growth, and that it's impossible to implement effective programs for the economic and social development of the partner states without the full participation of women. To this end, the partner states shall, through appropriate legisl legislative and other measures, a. Promote the empowerment and effective integration and participation of women at all levels of socioeconomic development, especially in decision-making. b. Abolish legislation and discourage customs that are discriminatory against women. c. Promote effective education awareness programs aimed at changing negative attitudes towards women. C. D. Create and adopt technologies that will ensure the stability of, of employment and professional progress for women workers. And E. Take such other measures that shall eliminate prejudices against women and promote the equality and the, of the female gender with that of the male gender in very respect. Article 122 of the treaty provides that, having recognized the importance of women as a vital economic link between agriculture, industry, and trade, the partner state undertook to, among others, a. Increase, increase the participation of women in business at the policy formulation and the implementation levels, b. Promote special programs for women in small, medium, and large-scale enterprises, C. Eliminate all laws, regulations, and the practices that hinder women's access to financial assistance, including credit. And D. Recognize and support the national and regional associations of women in the businesses in the business established to promote the effective participation of women in the trade and the development activities of the community. Following the outbreak of COVID-19, there was significant disruption in the global value chains, with China being the hub of manufacturing for most business operations. The spillover effect of this disruption has been felt by other African economies and largely by East African businesses being suppliers and importers of goods and services in the global economy. The outbreak of the COVID-19 led to partner states adopting and implementing measures to mitigate the impact of the pandemic spread on the human population. These affected the trade within the EAC and within the rest of the world. Some of the significant measures that affected the trade included, among others, restriction on movement of people at the borders, curfews, lockdowns, restriction of movement of non-essential goods, closure of businesses, and mandatory quarantines. Whereas women continue to contribute to the socioeconomic development of the region through, among others, engaging in trade within and across their national borders, it has been noted that the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic created an unprecedented challenge for women in trade across the, region, the globe, including those working to grow prosperity through trade in East Africa. In the exercise of its oversight mandate, the Committee on General Purpose held meetings with representatives from the East African Women 
in the business platform, IWIBIP, women cross-border associations, and women entrepreneurs to assess the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on women in cross-border trade in the EAC region. The meetings will be held virtually from 25th to 28th February 2021. 3.0, objectives of the oversight. The principal objective of conducting the oversight activity was to assess the impact of COVID-19 on women in trade and services. It was expected that during this activity, the committee would A, appreciate the impact of COVID-19 on women in cross-border trade, B, understand how the different government measures put in place to combat COVID-19 have affected the women in cross-border trade, C, explore possible interventions that can facilitate the full participation of women in cross-border trade to spur sustainable socioeconomic transformation and development of the East African community. 4.0 methodology. During the oversight activity, the committee, Roman 1, held meetings with representatives from the East African Women in Business Platform, Women Cross Border Associations, and the Women Entrepreneurs. Roman 2 prepared a report on the above subject matter for consideration by the Assembly. 5.0 Submissions by stakeholders. 5.1 Republic of Burundi. The representative from the Republic of Burundi stated that Burundi did not undertake lockdown measures, but was affected by the closure of borders for Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. This further affected the cross-border trade and the movement of goods and the people. There are several trade activities that take place between the borders of Burundi and Rwanda, Gasenyi, Nemba border, and Burundi and DRC, the Tumba border. The outbreak of COVID-19 impacted the women across the border trade in the following ways. One, the seven days mandatory quarantine at designated port health that were subjected to all travelers discouraged the movement of people, and the women who owned hotels and lodges had their business affected. Two, the lockdown measures adopted and implemented in other partner states led to production halts. Women traders whose businesses mainly depended on imported raw materials business came to a standstill and this affected the household earning and livelihood. Three, many women have been abandoned by their husbands because they are not earning and men can't sustain providing for families. Four, complete or partial closure of business. Due to closure, most women have consumed and utilized their capital to purchase household items. Five, the government of Burundi has not provided any funds to help revive the businesses that had been closed. Six, women lack smart mobile phones to be able to conduct online marketing and selling. The women have therefore been unable to explore their benefits of online marketing and selling. Possible intervention measures from one. In order to revive women cross border business, the government had adopted several standard operating procedures to stop the spreading of COVID-19. Roman 2, group selling is being encouraged where traders are encouraged to put products in the same vehicles, truck, trucks, and sell across borders. Roman 3, the government of Burundi needs to provide the funds to help those that have faced the closure of business. Roman 4, more training is needed on online platforms for trade, especially during COVID-19 period. Roman 5, there is a need to explore the possibility of providing women with more biophones. 5.2, Republic of Kenya. Stroke, we need the Republic of Tanzania, Namanga, OSDP. Roman 1, at the Namanga border post, women cross border are accepted to trade freely within a radius of 10 to 20 kilometers, but they are usually harassed and interrupted by border officials. Roman number two, 
Each partner state implementing national restrictions on COVID-19 has affected the trade at the border. Number three, lack of cold storage room for perishable products. During the designating of the one-stop border post, there was a provision of cold room and storage. The cold rooms have never been established at any of the border posts. Four, taxation and tariffs imposed on goods, like livestock being crossed within a radius of less than 10 kilometers in search of pasture and water. Communities living within a radius of 10 kilometers along the common boundaries of the East African Community Partner State were allowed to move freely with their goods and services without being subjected to customs regulations. Five, loss of capital and unemployment due to closure of business. Possible intervention. Roman one, the government needs to come up with an inclusive COVID-19 recovery plan where no man is left behind. Roman two, during the, the, the designing of the one-stop border post, there was a provision of establishing cold rooms at the borders. Update the cold rooms that have not been established. The EAC needs to expedite the process of establishing the cold rooms at the borders. 5.3. Republic of Rwanda. In the Republic of Rwanda, informal cross-border trade constitutes a big fraction of about 60% of Rwanda's total cross-border trade. In particular, cross-border trade co constitutes about 40% of the country's total trade. Therefore, any, sh any shrink in informal cross-border trade affects the country's overall trade picture. The lockdown that started in March 2020 led to restriction in the movement leading to slowing down of cross-the-border trade and the movement of raw materials. The outbreak of COVID-19 led to, first of all, closure of business and unemployment. Many workers laid off without a financial package. Two, reduction of customers due to national lockdown and social distancing. Many households were purchasing necessities, and this led to lowering consumption and production. Three, the high interest rate is charged by financial institutions. When the grace period was over, it had, it had to pay taxes. Four, delays in paying loans. Five, liquidity challenges since most businesses closed down. Six, failure to pay salaries leading to the, the closure of business. Seven, wastage of stock, especially those involved in mass production when the lockdown started. Eight, increase in warehouse costs leading to a loss of in investment. Nine, conferences like the Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting program that were meant to be hosted in the Republic of Rwanda did not take place. Hosting such conferences creates a multiplier effect in the tourism, agriculture, and entertainment sector among others. Then, delay of goods in transit. Truck drivers were required to be tested and present a COVID-19 certificate before crossing the borders. These led to delays in clearance of cargo and goods being stored for long hours, which affected their quality. 11. Inability to resume business affecting cross-border trade. Women were psychologically affected to extend of being unable to revive their business due to lack of morale. 12. Delays in the payment of loans leading to accumulation of interest. 13. Wasted the stock was far from where they are, they are located. Those dealing in squeeze materials like chalk processing or foodstuff, this also led to the depreciation of machines since they were not in use for a long time. Current situation and the possible intervention. The government is supporting the conducting of cross-border meetings and technical consultation among border authorities, both multi-sectoral health, immigration, customs, local authorities, etc. And specialized technical consultations focusing on health and stroke or immigration 
to strengthen the border coordination and enhance regional disease surveillance, information sharing and reporting. Two, the Ministry of Trade and Industry has offered training. The last training was in Rusizi on alternative financing and how to link traders with the banks. And there, there were discussions, discussions on the various financial opportunities offered in banks, linking women with the banks of Kigali and the other banks. There was capacity building at the district of Bujesera and Nyagatari. Online training. and other sanitary materials to the vulnerable groups, which include women. Roman 6, the Ministry of Trade and Industry is assessing to check the variation in the trade across borders. others providing goods and services, foster business and social interactions with other businesses both inside and outside the region and offering capital to business traders. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Kim, I can see him disturbing the, the region. Yes, I, I, please, can you, can you mute your microphones? Oh, I, I think, can you mute out whoever is not on the floor and has the microphone on? Do it for them. Yes. Do, do, mute it for them. Okay, please proceed. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Roman 8, a social recovery fund has been provided to support local businesses through restructuring, especially those in the hospitality, tourism sector, especially hostels and restaurants. Roman 9, the financial and the commercial institutions need to provide a loan guarantee for small and medium enterprises that were mainly affected by the lockdown. 10, entrepreneurs with the assistance of UN women has started business clinics in Rwanda. These are the business facilitation networks that have provided the social support for 30 women. This has helped to ensure business continuity, reopening and diversification. diversification. 11. Enhancing business networking and exchanging of products in the region and enhancing the value chain in the region. 12. Prolonging the grace period for traders and lowering interest rates. 5.4. Republic of Uganda. The closure of Gatuna, stroke Katuna border was closed for two years. This affected the women traders and disrupted their means of earning a living. The closure left both small and large scale businesses at the border struggling. Trucks taking the goods to Rwanda and the other neighboring countries like Burundi and the Democratic Republic of Congo were stopped at some border posts, be, being, dura being durated or had to use a much longer route via the Mirama Hills. Traders living across the borders resorted to using illegal routes to cross. Closure of business, especially those in the entertainment industry, hotel and restaurant owned among others. This also led to the loss of employment and the reduction in cash flow. Number three, increased smuggling activities. The restrictions in the movement and the limitations of trade and the domestic sale of goods 
has caused a huge increase in smuggling activities through and designed the points. Informal traders who survive on trading across the borders are now using and, uh, and designed the crossing points to earn a living. But this comes with some heavy cost to the region as well as the traders. Four, overproduction. In Uganda, agricultural farmers, growers, report that between 20 to 40 percent of the pineapples they produce on a large commercial scale go to waste. The situation has been exacerbated by the COVID-19 containment measures such as transport restrictions, quarantine including on the border districts, and the ban of weekly markets. Five, governments have mandated the workers to take costly protective measures such as the regular purchase of masks, the reduction in the number of passengers for motorcycles, taxis, or the observance of curfews. Farmers have seen uh, falling demand for their produce as restaurants have reduced their purchases in the face of drilling traffic. 5.25, Republic of South Sudan. In South Sudan, women constitute about 70% of traders engaged in informal trade at the border, especially at the borders with Uganda, Kenya, and Democratic Republic of Congo. Unlike the trading partners in these countries, many of the women in cross-border trade in the south, the south are informal, lack experience, and are largely driving the sector as a means of survival. Most of the women are household heads as a result of their men, husbands, being engaged in the front line fighting in the war, death, which left them single mothers. Since the outbreak of COVID, the COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic, in early 2020, women in cross-border have been impacted in so many ways, which include the following. One, the closure of the border, especially the Nimule border, to the closure of women-owned business since the majority of these women are involved in fresh produce or agricultural products. Two, there was a loss of capital for business as many women ended up using business products for consumption in the household. Some are selling off their household items, such as sofa, to raise capital for business. Three, Increased sexual exploitation and harassment as women traders try to negotiate their way to cross to Uganda to buy food items to sa for sale in the South Sudan side. Many end up being exploited and sexual harassed. Four, loss of life. Women who attempt to cross to Uganda to buy goods using and design the routes, especially crossing the, the river were targeted. In a recent assessment conducted, unknown gunmen would target the women crossing in the early morning hours, rob their business cash, and, and push them into the river. Five, women have been thrown out from premises in which they operate at the border due to failure to pay rental fees. Six, there has been increased exploitation by uniformed forces at the South Sudan border site. Uh, this is mainly because the, the uniformed forces have not been paid for several months, th thus taking advantage of women by exerting cash from the women in the border trade as, as a means of survival. Seven, the women serving groups uh, which they have often depended on as a source of business financing have collapsed due to non-ongoing contributions. Women are struggling to find something from, from hand to mouth for family survival. Eight, the cost of products and transportation has immensely increased, rendering women in cross-border cross -border trader helpless. And nine, the COVID-19 pandemic is causing women in cross-border trade to abandon trade and their businesses to cross to the refugee camps as the cost of living has been worsened by the, the, the already conflict affected the situation and super hyperinflation in South Sudan. 
The inflation renders the money women earn of less value as they have to lose so much in the sourcing from United States dollars currency to, to cross to Uganda to buy goods. The current situation on the, the ground in the Republic of South Sudan. Roman one. The Republic of South Sudan is experiencing the, the strictest the, the strictest lockdown. There is an extremely high demand for financial services for women to engage in business. The non-government organizations have stopped the development project and are only working on emergencies. People working on the development project have not been paid for the last nine months. Roman two. Limited or lack of access to internet services. There is no network for internet coverage. Therefore, it becomes difficult for women to carry out online sales and marketing. Roman three, the livelihood of women has been affected and has led to an increase in, in suicidal cases and no psychological support being offered to the women. Roman four, trademark East Africa, which was established to support the growth of trade, doesn't have an office in South Sudan. This, therefore, calls for the need for the Republic of South Sudan to offer office space for trademark East Africa to continue supporting trade-related activities and training in the country. 5.26, EAC Secretariat, Department of Customs and Trade. One, a restriction in the movement in the EAC region to curb the spread of COVID-19. The current outbreak of COVID-19 has affected the mobility at the region and international level, with various travel disruptions, restrictions, and blockages. The transporters have, have to test for COVID-19 and get certificates, and the testing has occasioned delays, curtailing the free movement of goods and services in the region. Two, delays at the border points. The various measures being imposed by EAC partner states to try to control the spread of COVID-19 have led to delays in the movement of cargo uh, at ports of entry. Even though there are deliberate policies to facilitate the, the, the speedy movement of cargo through the ports, the COVID-19 procedures that have been put in place make this difficult to achieve. They need for trucks to be dis disinfected in some, some instances, and the mandatory testing of truck drivers uh, leads to delays in the movement of the most essential medical supplies and relief food. Three, the stigma associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, there existed a negative attitudinal, attitudinal reactions directed towards the people who are infected or are suspected and the ones considered responsible for the spread of the, the virus. There is a negative perception towards those infected with the disease. The COVID-19 pandemic are acu patients are accused of being ignorant and negligent, thereby held responsible for having spread the virus. Four, the COVID-19 patients are being stereotyped as the active spreaders of coronavirus and are being treated as the passive acquirers of the disease. Uh, such a, a stereotype has led the society to adopt several negative treatments, uh, ranging from social media posts against them, stopping their entry into the residential areas and spreading rumors against them. The consequences attached to stigmatization are so devastating that even the, the formerly the, the diagnosed continue to be stigmatized. And even after defeating the virus, they have not been able to, to free themselves from being uh, shunned by society. Five, COVID-19 certificate is expensive and difficult to acquire. The cost of COVID-19 test is now becoming a hindrance to the free movement of people and goods within the East African community. The COVID-19-related non-tariff barriers and TBs continue to, to hinder 
cross-border trade due to different measures on COVID-19 in the region. Tests are priced different in each EAC partner state, while containment measures vary. It costs an average of $100 to carry out the COVID-19 test for the visitors to the, the, the six EAC partner states. For instance, Tanzania and Burundi charge a standard $100 for both nationals and foreigners, while the other partner state charges vary. In Rwanda, it, it, it's fifty dollars for the test. This point is zero. Observations and findings: one, women, small and and micro enterprises constitute about seventy four percent of the traders. The estimation of the trade value in some partner states is uh, approximately US US dollars one hundred forty five point four million. In Rwanda and the US, US dollars 606.6 million in Uganda. Cross border trade is also estimated to account for the livelihood of about 60% of EAC residents, hence its significance. Due to the COVID 19 pandemic, there have been increased restrictions on the movement of goods and people across borders, threatening the livelihoods of traders and their families and reduce revenue for the partner states. Two, increased rate of domestic violence. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19, I think we have a disruption of the network. Uh, let's wait for a minute and see how it can be restored. Uh, apologies as we try mm -hmm. to restore the network. Is that a problem of Shigali alone? No, no, no. no. Even, even here in Tanzania, we have a problem. I've been on and off so many times. Yeah, okay. let, let us just uh, wait for a few minutes and see if it can be restored. Honorable members, can another member, can another member of GP from another chapter who can access the the network continue reading the report as the Honorable Francois gets connected again? Okay. Please, is there a member with the report? If I can have your name from GP. Because you can as well read from the screen.
I have the report, but I'm not from GP. Let it be from GP. Who are GP members? Who are here? Honorable Pamela, are you from GP? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Yes, do you have Honorable Pamela is from GP. Uh, Honorable Josephine. Honorable Pamela is from GP. Okay, then do you have the report you can read for yeah, us France. from where Honorable Fr Francois ended? And some of us are not here to speak uh, this uh, report. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Do I think you... I can read from where she is. Uh, yes, please. Pr proceed. Yes. I'll start I'll start from one that women's SMEs constitute about seventy four percent of the traders. Uh, Okay, sorry for interference. I'll start from one. Women SMEs constitute about 74% of the traders. The estimation of the trade value in some partner states is approximately US dollar 145.4 million in Rwanda and the US dollar 606.6 .6 million in Uganda. Cross border trade is also estimated to account for the livelihood of about 60% of EAC residents, hence its significance. Due to the, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, there have been increased restrictions on the movement of goods and people across borders, threatening the livelihood of traders and their families and reduced revenue for the partner states. Increased rate of domestic violence since the outbreak. Can someone help me to remove the images of, of uh, from the HQ because I cannot read the whole document. Okay, is there a member who can uh, have a good view of the document? Honorable Francine. Yes, Honorable Speaker. You are from GP as well. Yes. Yes, I can. Please. I can continue the reading. Yes, please read. Thank you, Honorable Pamela, and sorry for that. Um, I have again to start by one. Women in SMEs constitute about seventy-four percent of the traders. The estimation of the trade value in some partner states is approximately US 145.4 million in Rwanda and the US 606.6 .6 million in Uganda. Cross border trade is also estimated to account for the livelihood of about 60% of PSC residents, hence its significance. Due to the COVID 19 pandemic, there have been increased restrictions of, on the movement of goods and people across borders, threatening the livelihood of, of traders and their families, and they reduce the revenues for the partner states. Um, I think I have the same problem uh, like Pamela. I need someone to remove this image. I need someone to help me uh, going up with the delivery. Maybe Clark uh, can help. Are you reading from the screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, now it's okay. Increased rate of domestic violence since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in the region, gender-based violence cases, including physical and emotional abuse, rape, sexual exploitation, female genital mutilation, and the earlier marriages are on the rise. Quarantine restrictions 
lockdowns and the curfews uh, have uh, often resulted in short-term or permanent job loss among primary household breadwinners, leading uh, to increase the violence toward family members, predominantly women. The abrupt decline in household income makes survivors even more dependent on their abusers and the accompanying stress and hardship. Combining with the close contact with the abusers often provoke a more instant of violence. Move up again, please. Kindly move up again, please. Escalated prices along key corridors okay. include including city uh, cities. Cross border trade provides a lifeline for local communities and urban cities spanning entire corridors. The volume of cross border trade translates into lower supplies and they increase the price of goods and services. In East Africa, many farmers have been unable to move their produ uh, produce to, to border market, which have cut off a vital source of cross-border trade. Much of the good crossing border uh, end up in the cities. Please go up again. Please help to go up again. I need someone to help to make the, the reading up again. Please. Okay. All right, honorable speaker, I need uh, the clerk to help eh? putting the reading up again. Uh, Mr. Speaker, may I come in because uh, I changed the place and can continue to support honorable Francine? Okay, you can continue, honorable Francine. Mm -hmm. Thank you, honorable mm -hmm. Francine. Honorable Francine. Mr. Graff, are we reading now? Number five, start with the number five. It's number five. Huh? Okay, thank you. Loss of income for small scale cross border women traders. Cross border trade provides an important source of income for cross border communities and vulnerable groups, including women and small holder farmers. Many of these communities live subsistence existence and require weekly trade across the border to purchase essentials to survive. The majority of informal cross-border trade consists of perishable agricultural products such as tomatoes, peppers, cassava, fish, and eggs. Traders received a very short notice, a couple of days in most cases, to prepare for border closures. The result is spoiled stock and heft losses for the traders. Six. Losses of stock and uh, sales from cross border trade disruptions negatively impact revenue and the ability to, to repay loans, leading to increased financial trade stress. The risk of financial stress is particularly acute for informal cross border traders who are typically unbanked and for bulk stock purchases rely on expensive informal loan shops. Many of these traders borrow money early in the morning to acquire merchandise and pay back in their evening of the same day once they have sold their goods. Losses from unsold stock due to COVID-19 home directives and travel restrictions run the risk of quickly escalating into heights in interest and the spiral of debt. Seven. Lack of harmonized COVID-19 restrictions and measures. It's crucial that the ESC regional cooperatives to harmonize COVID-19 border requirements and regulations to reduce delays while not undermining the safety of traders. The region plays a crucial role in 
coordinating the responses to the pandemic of its state to facilitate the free and timely flow of cross-border trade. Eight, Trademark East Africa has supported women through organizing training where women are trained in business, business training, taxation and compl compliance with taxation systems, export promotion, reward women that have educated the innovation in business after presenting their business proposals, the virtual market platforms among others. Nine, Slow down in the development of cross border value chain, chains. COVID 19 has strengthened the case for developing intra African value chains and unlocking the region's business potential. At the same time, COVID 19 border closures and disruptions have contributed to blockages in supply chains both within and outside the region. Effective and efficient border management is crucial to provide an environment conducive to the development of value chains in support of the region's industrialization and development agendas. Ten, high transportation costs. Transport connectivity plays a key role for growth and economic development. It's vital for increased competitiveness, productivity, trade, access to tourism markets, movement of goods, foreign investments, movement of people, and integration. As a measure to curb the spread of COVID-19, partner states implemented transportation restrictions ranging from travel bans of non-essential movement to closing of air, land, and maritime borders to passengers. As a result of COVID-19 road cargo transportation to and to the and from the region was interrupted resulting in higher shipping and transportation costs, costs. 11. The governments in the EAC partner states have not put any special recovery fund specifically targeting women traders. Measures that have been put in place are for both men and women. 12. Limited access to the internet. Many women lack access to the internet and many even lack mobile phones to enable them to transact a business online. 7.0 Recommendations 1. Strengthening of joint border communities with regards to pro procedures to ease of movement of persons, goods and services between borders. This will help to ensure that livelihoods among the local communities are not disrupted as the move will impact negatively the success of the EAC integration. Border regulations are not always well understood and in some instances have been inconsistently applied. This has confused many traders and truck drivers and clashes with the border authorities. Many disputes have arisen that have required diplomatic intervention. Two. The EAC region must cooperate to coordinate and harmonize COVID-19 border requirements and regulations to reduce delays while not undermining the safety of trade. A regional response plan plays a crucial role in coordinating the responses to the pandemic of the, the partner states. It facilitates free and timely flow of cross-border trade. A harmonized approach in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic makes communication and sharing of information on COVID-19 cases easy. Coordination and collective action, issuing of actions and collective actions, easy issuing of, of basic recommendations on how states can mitigate the spread of the disease, among others. Communication and transparency are widely seen as key to engender trust among populations and you help create a basis for consistency in how measures are applied. Three, financial institutions should lower conditions for accessing finances by women. Special purpose financing schemes to support the sector should be introduced. The partner states need to consider supporting women with their own interest loans and giving them enough grace period before repayment. Tax holder for at least 60 months. To ease liquidity constraints, Many countries have introduced measures to defer tax 
social security payments, debt payment, and rent and utility payments. In some cases, tax relief or a, a, a moratorium <coughs> on debt repayments have been implemented. For government provide the means for small manufacturing companies to access the raw materials and the other resources. Five, they need to lower and harmonize COVID-19 related the charges in the East African community in a bid to ease the cost of doing the business and the boost intra EAC trade. The EAC Secretariat should fast track coordination and harmonization of measures on COVID-19 for economic resilience and the growth of the region. Six, they need to add value to produce so to produce so that it can be preserved for a long time attract higher higher prices. Value addition through processing, packaging, and, and branding, as well as group marketing plays a big role in operational costs. Seven, introduction on an online platform, eHub, where traders upload the product as a way of marketing. On the other hand, expansion of existing businesses calls for the utilization of digital and new technologies to enhance their reach and efficiency at lower cost. Partner states need to put in place structural policies to help women traders adopt uh, new working methods and the digital technologies and to find new markets and sales channels to continue operations under the prevailing containment measures. Eight, exploitation of new opportunities by women in former cross border traders. The opportunities are manifested in terms of the, the diversification into new products or expansion of existing enterprises. Diversification entails supporting the women acquire new skills and information, capital for trading, and development of marketing strategies. The need to support women, that's nine, the need to support women to expand existing businesses with a special emphasis on group marketing and value addition. Women need to be supported to identify and penetrate new markets. Once markets are identified, effective information sharing mechanism must be instituted to inform the relevant women traders, links to financial institutions made and marketing strategies developed. Ten, Government should provide a government COVID-19 recovery fund and the programs that are targeting specifically women cross-border traders. This will help to boost finances for women whose businesses affected by the outbreak of COVID-19. Here's the end of the Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Francois, on behalf of the Chair, Committee on General Purpose. Honorable members, I now want to propose the motion that the report of the Committee on General Purpose on the oversight activity to assess the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on women in cross-border trade in the East African community be adopted. Debate is open. Yes, the debate is open. Is that Ambassador Fatuma? Yes. And the uh, Honorable Buru and the Honorable Claude. Yes. Okay, proceed, the Honorable Fatuma. <laughs> and the Honorable Francine will follow. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. I would like to start thanking the Committee on General Purpose and the Honorable Francoise for a very good report. All right, Honorable, Honorable Members, as you know, COVID 19 is currently both a health and economic threat that is ravaging across ESC and beyond the region. We've noted that in the related restriction measures such as lockdowns, curfews, quarantines, border closures 
have affected cross-border trade, free movement of people, labor, and goods. And in particular, women have been mostly been affected. In terms of statistics, a total of 81% of the global workforce of 3.3 billion people have had their workplace fully or partly shut down as a result of coronavirus. We've also noted that women SMEs constitute about 74% of the traders and estimates uh, of trade contribution of about 145.4 million US dollars in the Republic of Rwanda and 600 and 6.6 .6 million in the Republic of Uganda. But also cross-border trade estimates account to livelihoods of about 60% of East African residents, hence the importance of cross-border trade. We also note that East African community is a market-driven uh, sector, uh, is a market-driven community, and therefore the obligation of partner states to create an equaling environment for the private, private sector, in particular to enhance private sector confidence, and private sector includes women traders. Among the issues that have been highlighted in the report include the issue of loss of capital and unemployment, the high transport cost, delays at the border costs, but you've also noted that there are emerging issues such as domestic violence against women, harass sexual harassment and exploitation at certain border points. I think it was noted in the Republic of South Sudan. And I hope uh, Honorable Francois will tell us whether there are specific measures being undertaken by the Republic of South Sudan and ES in general to address this emerging issue of domestic violence and harassment against women. There is also another issue that was raised in the report about the special recovery funds that countries are adopting to, meet, to deal with the uh, impact of COVID-19 on the economies but we are informed that these special funds do not necessarily target women. I think it's only in the Republic of Rwanda that we've seen some programs, but they are also targeting both men and women. But I didn't see in other countries whether they are special funds. And therefore, uh, in terms of the regional response, I just wanted to know whether uh, ESC has come up with a strategy to urge partner states to integrate specific concerns of women cross-border trade uh, at partner states level. The issue of lack of harmonized COVID-19 measures, again, I would also wish to know what ESC is doing, especially the relevant sectoral committees and also the Secretariat. Because unless if we harmonize these measures, coordination and synergy, we shall continue having challenges. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, I, I agree with all the observations and recommendations in the report. But however, I would like to propose a few recommendations. One, there is need to for ESC to come up with an ESC gender strategy. I know we have a gender policy, but we need to have a gender strategy at the regional level with a special component on empowering cross-border women traders and also mitigating the challenges that are facing women related to COVID. Because if we have a whole chapter in the treaty that is dealing with women in business, we need to show how this is being operationalized at the strategy level. 
The other uh, recommendation is to strengthen the gender directorate at the ESC secretariat level. I'd like to urge the Council of Ministers in the institutional review uh, process to see how they can upgrade the directorate of gender at the ESC level. I understand it is underfunded with only one staff dealing with so many portfolios, underbudgeted, because this is one way to address the main issues addressed in the report, not only in the short term, but also uh, in the long term. The integration of women concerns in the recovery uh, programs is mentioned in the report, but as I say, it should be taken as a regional intervention so that partner states are directed by the council to act on them, otherwise it will only be recommendation that cannot be taken up. Finally, there is a, a project in the ESC that is called uh, 50 African Women Speak. 50 million, 50 million uh, African Women Speak. It's a project that he, um, is being uh, managed by East African Community, Comesa and ECOWAS. It is an innovative digital platform that was uh, created uh, some time back and launched during the Global uh, Gender Summit in Kigali in 2019. And I think this is an opportunity really to help the, the women entrepreneurs, especially in creating a platform where they can access where they can work with each other and where they can get information related to markets and also doing business. So I'd like to add the Secretariat, the Council, to direct the Secretariat to sensitize women entrepreneurs about this very important platform so that you can be able to address the issue that was raised of women lacking access to internet. Then finally is the issue of, uh, we know there is uh, another uh, institution called the East African Business Council that is advocating for private sector in the community and it's a very important platform. But it's not very clear whether women entrepreneurs have a critical role in terms of voice decision making. So this is also another organ that can profile the voices of women entrepreneurs. I'd like to support the report and thank once again the committee for a very good report. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, uh, Honorable Ambassador Fatuma. Honorable Dr. Oburu. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to uh, start by first of all uh, congratulating the uh, committee and supporting this report of this uh, I congratulate them for the choice of the title this is uh, one of the, the on uh, assessing the the purpose of the uh, to assess the impact of covid pandemic on women cross border trade in the EAC um, mr speaker the role of women in cross-border trade in the EAC is uh, very, very crucial to the survival of most people in the borders. I remember, Mr. Speaker, when there was a, a problem at the border of uh, Rwanda and, uh, and, and Uganda, and we, 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 we went around there, and Mr. Speaker, we found that there is interdependence between states on the supply, particularly of food. So when the bureaucracies or the, our governments uh, disagree, uh, actually the people will always find a way around it because it is a matter of life and death for the survival of the people. In terms of food supplies, for instance, and uh, where I come from, uh, between Uganda and Kenya, we depend on the cross-border trade. And uh, the people who carry out this cross-border trade are mainly women. 
and the easing the trade by using the provisions of the common market protocol which provides for free movement of people free movement of goods free movement of services and free movement of uh, capital is uh, very very crucial and uh, we have seen it where there are problems sometimes in uh, which are uh, uh, caused by ntbs uh, by the uh, the governments for instance banning sugar or banning uh, maize or, or uh, you know around and the people suffer and uh, it does not only uh, make the situation uh, difficult but in encourage, encourages smuggling because there's no way people are going to survive if those kind of ntbs are there except uh, that uh, the government if there is any revenue to be uh, raised the government will not get it because it will uh, everything will go underground uh, mr speaker this is uh, very important and uh, we have seen uh, between our countries uganda and kenya uh, across the border for instance the area where i come from we depend on uh, women who are actually in groups and they import maize from Uganda and a lot of food comes in to my uh, county where I come from from Uganda and we depend on these hard working women when the, the border was uh, difficult to to cross uh, it was a lot more difficult but with the establishment i mean with the now agreement on uh, using ids instead of passports that uh, people can cross the border and uh, use IDs instead of using passports, it has been uh, much easier. But again, when the COVID uh, pandemic came, I visited the border personally. I visited uh, Busia and saw the way the, 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 the business was uh, flowing at that time, uh, Mr. Speaker, there was uh, there were some NTBs which were uh, making it very difficult for people to cross the the border because of the the, the delay in uh, finding the I mean testing uh, on COVID. But uh, a solution was found, uh, which was negotiated very quickly between the two states. And the goods started flowing uh, freely between this side and that side. And uh, there is another provision which also made it easier, which is uh, the provision that uh, anybody who is uh, crossing the border uh, with goods worth uh, uh, less than two thousand uh, dollars don't uh, pay any uh, taxes, and uh, they they move freely between uh, 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 across the borders that was making it uh, quite easy for that uh, trade but uh, mr speaker sir i would like to uh, appeal with our states to stick to the principle of uh, which has been established in the community of reducing the ntbs because uh, sometimes these ntbs they come uh, very abruptly <coughs> And uh, the it, it is it reflects very heavily on the lives of the ordinary uh, uh, East African, uh, particularly on women, because it is women who are the hardest working, and they are the ones who do some of these uh, uh, bu small businesses, which directly affect the livelihoods of the of the Wanaishi. Mr. Speaker, I didn't have much to say on this uh, uh, on this matter, but it is a matter which uh, uh, is uh, uh, touches my heart, and I, I would really want to encourage uh, that uh, the, the, that we support the women who are uh, doing business under very difficult conditions now because of this scourge called. Uh, 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 COVID-19 and uh, I hope that everybody 
will be sensitive and uh, help this situation so that uh, the provisions which are given in the common market uh, protocol which has been signed by all our states are implemented because uh, Mr. Speaker, I think the biggest problem we have in the community is that even though the protocols are signed, but the implementation is left to the member states and a lot our member states take their time to introduce uh, the enabling laws to uh, fully implement the provisions in uh, the protocols which are signed. And uh, I hope under this, particularly under the COVID conditions, the states must be very, very sensitive when introducing NTBs in uh, facilitation of trade, particularly the small traders, and particularly when the, the ones done by our mothers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to conclude by uh, supporting uh, this uh, motion uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I want to support the motion. Mr. Speaker, thank you, sir. I support. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Dr. Oburu. Uh, the next was Honorable Claude. Your microphone is not working. Honorable Francine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. I would like to declare that I'm a member of this, uh, the GP committee, and I thank uh, Honorable Francoise, who stand on behalf of the chair for the, the good presentation. Uh, I have some comments. One is uh, to recognize the role and the importance of the inclusion of women in the social economic transformation, which is no longer a doubt, but uh, now it is uh, becoming a reality, not only in the, in the world, but also specifically in, the, in this uh, community. And we appreciate that uh, even through the programs and the project, and the policies uh, uh, undertaken, they are taking into consideration uh, the role of women and the issue of gender, so that at the end we have uh, projects that, that are uh, responding well uh, to the gender issues and the rights of uh, women and the men are well considered in uh, whatever we are doing uh, in our social development uh, initiative. Uh, but uh, with the COVID-19, we have been uh, experiencing another level whereby uh, uh, business interaction, uh, physical interaction is not yet, uh, is minimized. And uh, people are now in another way of innovation to see how they can go beyond the physical interaction to go through the, the online. And the good thing is uh, we have some good practices which we are observing through uh, the capacity building we have been receiving through uh, the women in the business. They are saying that uh, they are training which are given to women uh, uh, at the cross-border um, uh, site. They are uh, trained to use now the online trading. They are uh, using now the online payment, online uh, banking, which is helping them now to to go beyond the restriction and the limitation given by the COVID to be able to continue their business. And uh, we have been uh, also informed on some uh, recovered, recovered uh, funds that are installed in some partner sets, especially, uh, especially I think in Rwanda, whereby uh, women in, uh, in the business are able to get those, uh, those funds to be able to restart when they have been stopping, so that it can be uh, more prosperous rather than stopping what they have been uh, doing for the better of the economy, of their national uh, economies, but also for the, the, the better of their family uh, livelihood. But there is something that has been reported, 
which uh, is uh, at the border um, cross uh, OSBP, whereby they are they are reporting that uh, it has been planned to be a, a cold storage room, which is uh, helping uh, business people to to make a good uh, conservation of their um, perishable products. But uh, in the design, it, it is not there. That now they are they are um, they they are. Uh, asking that we can uh, advocate for them so that those uh, storage sh should be uh, put in place. That's why now we are, uh, we are uh, urging the council to follow that matter so that uh, those, uh, those uh, room, called the room should be put on the OSBP. It can be used now during COVID-19, but it will be also useful after the, the COVID-19 where uh, we will be having the quality, but also the effectiveness of their product under, uh, under trading. Uh, by concluding, I would like to encourage the women in business to be more product, uh, proactive, as we have seen that uh, the good practices we are learning from each other can be helpful for our women to be more prosperous and also to be more powerful on the domain of uh, business. And we can appreciate that uh, when we put our, our, our effort together, not only at the national level, but also at the regional level, through, for example, the uh, East African Business Council, we can make uh, bigger things which are helping our, our women in the business to, to make more and better things that, uh, rather than what they are doing uh, today. And we are appreciating the... The, the, the contribution they are doing in the national economies, but also how they are supporting their families to be uh, in good health. So I support the, the report and uh, I encourage women to continue in this uh, spirit so that they can be um, better than what they are doing today. I submit a lot of speaker. Thank you. Honora uh, Bonduayo and uh... Thank you, uh, uh, thank you, uh, all right, honorable speaker, for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the United Republic of Tanzania for having a female president. We're talking about women here, the progress of women. That is one of remarkable progress within our region. Although it's out of the, the, the business concept, but an achievement for women and the women in within the, our region, you, you have to congratulate yourself, yourself for the milestone achievement. Mr. Araton, our speaker, I just want to contribute on this report because it's very important for one reason. I remember I was a part, uh, last, uh, last year I was uh, in a GP <coughs> committee whereby we once visited the Namanga border and we were approached by Maasai women traders who were facing some difficulties at the border of uh, one of the partner uh, states. So this report, I, I thought they, are, they were going to to bring that issue in the report, because most of the members, including on our Francoise, she knows that issue, that problem of those uh, women traders. I assume that they were going to incorporate that problem of those women where they raise their issues of being not allowed within one partner state, whereas other Maasai uh, women traders from uh, partner state A could be allowed to enter partner state B. So, uh, on our speaker, this is one of the things which are, are stopping our women to do fair business. Where some are allowed some way, others are broke some way. So my other issue is uh, how uh, women traders are being treated on these borders. Some of these borders, they take, the officials take a chance by mistreating women because they know they are very easy target. So this is also must be 
reported so that those officials who work there, they must be trained how to deal with those, uh, I can say that, uh, the vulnerable people. Are not vulnerable. No, I, I have a reason to say so. Because yeah. once it comes to corruption, they are easily targeted. Mm-mm. Yes, they are easily targeted. We went in one border. The women who were trading uh, this small fish, they said they were always being solicited by uh, the officials to give them a, a bribe so that they can they can pass by. Whereas even if they have a document, there's another another border, Horiri uh, Taveta, where women were scared to 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 use the main border because of the same issue. And they have to pass through the bush. In that bush, there are these guys who allow them to, to transport their goods. Sometimes they steal from them. So those are the issues which should be addressed here. How, to, are going, how they are going to, to, to work together with those uh, border officials to, to sensitize those women, to educate them, to use the main borders, not to scare the borders, instead of using the the bush back door, the back door uh, way. So, right on our speaker, that was my observation. This report to to incorporate those small problems which are, are, normally affect women traders. Thank you, speaker. Thank you, Honourable Ndwaya. Is there another member? I, I, honorable, yes, Honorable Claude, if your microphone is back, then Honorable Sophia, Honorable Pamela, and Honorable Oda. Honorable Oda, yes, I can hear you. Hold the word again. Let me repeat the order now. Let me repeat it. Honorable Claude, Honorable Sophia, Honorable Oda Gasinzigwa, Honorable Pamela, Honorable Dr. Woda. Okay. Okay. Thank Go you. ahead, please. Honorable Jean Claude, your microphone is still not okay. So, Honorable Sophia, you can proceed. Okay. Uh, thank you, right Honorable yeah, Speaker. And uh, I thank you for giving me this pro. Brandon. Yes. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me this floor. And then uh, I'd like to declare that I'm a member of this committee for donor purpose. Uh, first of all, what I want to say, I, uh, I don't know whether it has been mentioned in the report. Uh, our, the woman who is doing this small, this, this is small, traders uh, around cross borders they are facing uh, they are facing a problem of not having information posts on the side of Tanzania according to the women that uh, we uh, with uh, with whom we interact uh, here in, Ibudu, in Ibudumbura. there is an association of uh, repatriate women with whom we interact and then uh, uh, they, they told us that they have a problem of having such an information post on the side of Tanzania. Uh, and this uh, information post uh, uh, was supposed to help them to, to find solution when, for example, they, they are facing a problem or conflict. Uh, they, they have to, to address to them and help them to find solution. Then they were saying that it would be a good thing to have a such post information on this side of Tanzania. Uh, the other thing that I want to say is, uh, is just to salute this, uh, this good uh, uh, decision, this good uh, program of uh, helping this uh, woman of, uh, uh, for doing their business using a platform. But I found that uh, it will be... Uh, uh, they, it will be a good deal if uh, the donors or any who will be who will, uh, feel a need of helping those women to to give them to give them a smartphone. If not, 
those women will still find uh, problems because most of them uh, they are not they are, they are not uh, uh, they have just uh, uh, they don't have a means which will help them to, to buy for them those uh, those smartphones. Uh, especially, uh, they cannot have uh, the, those uh, smartphones because even even though they were doing those uh, uh, that uh, they were doing that uh, uh, that business, for example, those who were uh, doing uh, business of uh, selling uh, uh, selling fruit, they they just have a, a short. Uh, they just have a little money. Yeah, and during this COVID, they have already consumed their capital. They are even wondering how they will get uh, they will get the, that uh, capital. As long as within this uh, COVID, uh, with uh, this uh, the measures which have been taken by the government, which uh, prevent people to travel or the, which prevent uh, the movement of people, then they are wondering how they will get they will get another capital as they have already consumed that. Yeah, then. I was uh, proposing that as uh, we could propose that uh, uh, it could be uh, the reserve fund, which will be uh, uh, which will be which will be used when there is uh, when uh, which will be used while there is a need of coming up coming with uh, any kind of calamity. I propose that they uh, it, uh, it would do, it would be good also. If it, uh, if the, it would be a reserve fund, which will which will be reserved for supporting those women, especially during this period of uh, of pandemic. Yeah, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the other thing that I can say by concluding is is that uh, this this women who are doing this uh, this. Uh, uh, they, they, who are doing uh, this uh, small trade around cross border? They are facing uh, problems uh, when sometimes they can be raped. Yeah, uh, th that is also the problem that women can can uh, can have while doing their business. Also, others, as it has been reported, others, as they were the only uh, source of income, some of them has been kicked away by their husband. Or others, or, or other of them has been even left their family because they, there is a challenge now in a family. They were uh, the women that we met were then support uh, were proposing that uh, they can be uh, they, the measures can be revised so that they will allow them to continue doing business. Here in Budumbura, the woman that we met was proposing that they can do what they called. A group at uh, what group uh, group at selling, where they were thinking that the, they can collect a, a product and give to one, uh, give to one member of them and sell it. And they, when he or she finished to sell those products and then come with the money and share, is what they were proposing. Mr. Speaker, I support the report. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Honourable Sophie. Uh, Honorable Claude, your microphone is problematic, so I don't know how many times. Now, I now it is working. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. I just want to say that, uh, in, a, in addition to what other members said, 74% uh, of uh, traders are women, and 60% uh, of them they are cross border traders. And when you see uh, the impact of this COVID-19, it impacted the harder small traders and women in particular. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, while I appreciate the arrangement, the arrangement of allowing border communities to trade and uh, move freely within the boundaries less than 20 kilometers, I'm very concerned about the um, I'm very concerned about the harassment reported. The harassment against women at the border of Namanga uh, and the border of um, Uganda and South Sudan. The sexual exploitation and the sexual harassment uh, against women should not be tolerated. Right, Honorable Speaker, um, it is uh, 
Very bad to hear this information that at the border, uh, women who are doing cross-border trade, they are being sexually exploited, exploited and harassed. I therefore um, want that in this very moment when we have uh, a member of the summit who is a woman, we should not uh, tolerate this one. Uh, this kind of behavior of the border officials or other people at the border who are harassing and sexually exploit women who are trading. That is why, right Honorable Speaker, uh, I want to propose a recommendation. In addition to the given recommendations in, in, in this report, I want to add a new one to recommend this assembly to urge the Council of Ministers to investigate on this matter of harassment of women at the border and take responsive action against it. That Honorable Speaker, I support this, this report with this amendment. Thank you. All right, thank you, Honorable Flood. Uh, Honorable Order. Thank you, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, and I'm sorry I cannot be seen because of the network I have. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. I want to take this opportunity to also thank the General Purpose Committee and uh, our able chair of today, Honorable Francoise, for the good report. I also want to declare that I support fully the report, uh, especially that um, we are talking about a big part of our community and the challenge of pandemic we are having uh, uh, in East Africa, but also uh, in the in the globe of the uh, this was uh, this is a, a timely exercise and i want to uh, by choosing uh, this uh, important exercise and um, if we all remember very well right honorable speaker when we started this year uh, you clearly uh, requested the committees uh, to to think twice when we are choosing the topics to especially when we are doing our oversight. So I think uh, this is a very, very important uh, uh, topic that GP has uh, uh, chosen, especially that uh, uh, if you look into all our member states, uh, you find that uh, women contribute a lot in our GDP. And most importantly, uh, when it comes to the issues of uh, trade, uh, you find that um, informal uh, trade, which is uh, being occupied by mainly women, and which, by the way, uh, frankly speaking, is not that much easy. But you find uh, most of the of the of the of the of the traders in the in the in the informal sector, uh, which is difficult, very difficult. Uh, you find. Men in this sector, and we really want to thank uh, the women of East Africa uh, for the work they are doing in order to earn the living, in order to contribute to the economy of our of our of our of our countries. And I think it is the mandate of our partner states, uh, governments, but also the parliaments, and especially now the EALA as the regional assembly to every time advocate, every time uh, monitor, every time encourage our women uh, and girls in the partner states, uh, especially those who are daring to do, uh, to go into the into trade, the area or the sector which has been mainly occupied by men, uh, but now women are really uh, working very hard to make sure that they can uh, uh, work with the men and uh, uh, try to see how the the uh, the member states or the, the communities is uh, being uh, 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 improved on uh, the, the in the trade sector. Right, Honorable Speaker, I, I just wanted to uh, say that I, I I support all the all the findings and the recommendations. I just said wanted to add few uh, on the recommendations. One. Uh, uh, is 
on the, we want to know if uh, the EAC, I think this has been mentioned by uh, Mwishimiwa Fatuma uh, on the proposal of uh, having, I know we have a policy for, for, for gender in the EAC, uh, but I'm not very much sure uh, on the strategic plan, but I also wanted to uh, add my voice on what uh, uh, Honorable Fatuma has proposed on revisiting uh, our, uh, if we have it, the the the, the uh, the strategic plan for for gender, because all these things, uh, if they are well put in the strategic plan, uh, then it will be easier to monitor and understand where the challenge is. Uh, so if it is there, that will be good, uh, but we'll need to revisit it. But if we don't have one, then it will be a high time that uh, uh, we have one uh, to make sure that we can be able to implement. Uh, secondly, uh, my... Second recommendation is on the uh, reviving of uh, the women in business platform. Uh, we used to have uh, a women. Yes, uh, Honorable Oda is disconnected, and when she comes back, she will have an opportunity to conclude her debate. In the meantime, Honorable Pamela can take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to in business. I think it is not... Honorable Oda, Honorable Oda, for some time you were disconnected. I think you got disconnected at a point where you were talking about women in business and the revival of that platform. So, uh, Honorable Oda, can you stay away for a while? Uh, Honorable Pamela, please continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like also to to mention that I'm a member of this committee of the General Purpose Committee. Uh, uh, mine will be just two points. But first of all, I would like to join my colleagues to appreciate the role of women traders at E. Uh, yes, Honorable Pamela. Uh, Honorable Pamela, it looks like your microphone is also not coming out clear. Can you hear her? Can you hear Honorable Members? I can hear her, but she's breaking. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Honorable Pamela, get closer to the microphone and we see if we can get closer. To the okay, Mr. Speaker. Is it clear? Hello? Can you proceed and we hear how it is coming through now? Okay. Yeah, I wanted to say that, first of all, I'm a member of this co of General Purpose Committee, and I've joined my colleague to congratulate and they appreciate the role of women traders at EAC level. And I was saying that I, I have just a few points to add on what other colleagues have said, have mentioned. Uh, the first point is I was looking at the challenges which were mentioned and the challenges which were, were brought in by the stakeholders we met. But my concern is I think the, most of the challenges were not they did not come in because only of the of the COVID nineteen uh, issue. I see most of the challenges were even there before, and I think as a as a member of parliament, we have a role to keep on oversighting the implementation of the protocols and ensuring that we strengthening the implementation of the EAC protocol, especially those uh, related to trade issues. Because uh, some of the things which were mentioned, you see, they, they, especially on the poli policy and guidelines, it, are coming from the direct pro uh, protocols which are specific or concerned with the customs and trade. So this is our, is our baby, and I think we need to conduct an oversight again in this specific issue to see on how the implementation is going. Uh, another thing is uh, from the request which were brought by the, by these stakeholders and the observation which were made by the committee, 
see that we argue the council to direct maybe the secretariat and the, those who are concerned to put some ways on the charges which were came in, which are related to COVID-19. And if it's not at an EAC level, maybe council can direct the partner states to put some, uh, to waive these charges because you can see uh, most women were affected by these charges because they were the business that is not their business are not stable and now they are being kept to they are being requested to pay for these charges while their business is not they are not stable and the other thing also i would like to join the my colleagues honorable ambassador fatma and honorable Oda uh on the issue of going back and look at the establishing a or if it's there to look at the uh either this uh, gender policy and maybe we can either uh, convince the secretariat and also the members of the house to participate to establish the gender strategy of, of the eac because we really need to have the strategy which will incorporate all the women and even men issues relating to trade and the other other many many other issues because it's not only on the trade matters we have a lot to, to do with women and men but we really need to have a specific strategy and the last thing while appreciating the measures which have been taken by the partner state in uh, dealing with this pandemic i'm also in the view that we can advise or we can uh, put our recommendation to the council that we shall need to have an integrated intervention on dealing with this with the pandemics because once we have an in integrated intervention at least we can save uh, we can help the citizen of this community because we all know that once we have the especially the integrated policies we have this uh, one guidelines which which guides uh, member or uh, citizen from all the uh, the partner states we shall at least get uh, a relief from the challenges which are ongoing especially from these borders where they had the lockdown and they are from the other side they don't have a lockdown we all know that we cannot separate the we cannot separate the citizen of the eac because most of the borders we interact in one way or another so we cannot separate the citizens so if one one side is closed and the other side is open you can see the way it affects the, the citizen of, uh, of that side so it's my plea that we request the council to relook at, at this thing and maybe i don't know the way they'll handle this issue but we really need an integrated movement we really need a collaborative movement when it comes to issue of pandemic you cannot solve the pandemic issue by yourself uh, by saying so mr speaker i would like to support the report with this uh, with my with the mentioned observation thank you mr speaker Thank you, Honorable Pamela. Right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable back. Order, are you connected again for you to conclude? Ye yes, um, uh, I, can, I can wind up. I uh, had a few recommendations to, I don't know where I ended, but uh, uh, the second one the, was... You ended at a point where you were talking about the women in business platform. Oh, okay, thank you, sir. So that, that is the second uh, uh, proposal because this platform has been there and it has uh, really... Ah, that's unfortunate. Okay. Honorable Dr. Well, Woda. Connected in business in Africa. I mean that uh, the... Yes, right, Honorable Speaker. Hey, honor, honorable Honorable Gasinziwa, please, your microphone has a problem. You will have to bear with us. Then if honorable, work honorable Dr. together, Woda, then you can... can... Hmm. Use the cost. Yes. Uh, and I was supporting yeah. affirmative action. Uh, being put in place, uh, especially for the, oh, uh, the special program problematic. for women. Honorable order. Can you hear me, sir? 
we hear yes, you sir. then at some point it goes off so we don't know uh, okay let, let me quickly finalize uh so i was proposing for the special program for women in informal sector uh another one uh, the special one i wanted to propose is for a gbv for the gender based violence i propose the EAC establishes at the borders. Uh, we have uh, a good experience in Rwanda. Uh, we call it Isange One Stop Center. Uh, it helps the victims of the gender-based violence and uh, it helps in the areas of legal, health, social, social support and also psychosocial support. So I propose uh, that we recommend to the council uh, in our borders uh, to the our, our established a uh, one-stop center. Uh, maybe I can I can explain later uh, during the implementation. I, uh, the last one is on accountability. I also want to suggest that uh, so, honourable honourable Gasinzigwa, because you are making some recommendations. Find a way to write it to them. Find a way to write it to them to the to the chair. Honorable Gasinzi, please, you can you can switch off the microphone because it is causing a lot of disruptions. So maybe you can write whatever recommendations you are making and forward them to to the committee chairperson. She will handle them during the response. Honorable Dr. Wada, now you can proceed. Yeah, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. And I would like really to thank the GP committee for this very important activity which they have undertook, which also was coinciding uh, to be read in this uh, month of March, which is we consider the month of women because uh, it's of March was the Women's Day. And I want to wish every one of the members uh, happy Women's Days. Uh, Honorable Speaker, indeed, uh, COVID-19 has affected all the economies of the world, leave alone the small women SMEs. And I want also to thank the Trademark East Africa for their great job in training and also exposing uh, the women, uh, the small women SMEs to trainings and uh, many things. Honorable Speaker, in this report, as a women activist, I'm really pe uh, feeling a lot of pain because uh, there are many painful things in this report. One of them is that the vulnerability of women traders to many things which they're exposed to. Women are exposed to harassment by the officials at the borders. And this is uh, uh, in the report uh, in the border from Kenya to Tanzania. Also, right on the speaker, women are facing sexual harassment, and also sometimes they're exposed even to the level of death in the border between Uganda and South Sudan. And this is really very painful. Right, Honorable Speaker, I think as women activists, as women parliamentarians, we have to speak out to our women of their rights and also on where to, uh, to go with this report, because sometimes it's very difficult to go and excuse, accuse the same person who has done something wrong to you. That's why, Honorable Speaker, I propose an amendment that, uh, as in recommendation, we should have very safe and supportive centers for the women whereby they can go and accuse these sexual cases or this harassment, because sometimes women shy of going to, to, to report these cases because they will find the same people whom had them or their friends. So in my proposal, there should be centers which are safe and supportive to the women. And I think Honorable Claude uh, has mentioned something like that. And uh, maybe Honorable Order also was uh, talking of the same thing. Right, Honorable Speaker, it's very painful also that during this pandemic, most of the women are going through uh, domestic violence because they are not earning a living, which is really painful. Honorable Speaker, I was in a flight, uh, Qatar flight, uh, to one of the countries, and I met more than 50 young girls and ladies going to 
uh, to work because now people are losing their work. Some of them are graduating. Telling them I went to them, 30 minutes talking to them about when they reach this area, uh, region and when they reach these countries, what is their right and what are they supposed to do if they get into any harassment or abuse of their rights. So I think this is one of the which we should educate our women, our girls, and I think our women caucus in this parliament should also be very proactive in this case. Honorable Speaker, I will not talk too much. I just want to support the recommendation given by the GB committee uh, for the region that we should cooperate and coordinate and harmonize the COVID-19 border requirements and regulation while not undermining the severity of the trade and the traders. The severity of our traders should be the paramount. And also the partner states should consider to support women with low interest loans. Honorable Speaker, I beg to submit and I beg to support the report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable uh, Dr. Woda. May I now call the, 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 the Honorable Member standing in for the Chair to, to handle the responses. Honorable Francois. Yes, I was unmuting my... Yes. Honorable Speaker. Yes, yes Honorable Wanjie. There was indication that Chair Council wanted to ah, contribute. Yes, sorry, I, I didn't see. Yeah, sorry, yes. I'm very sorry about that. Where the, is... the PA has just left this sure. venue in another office where he is. Maybe if you give a minute or yes. so. Yes, if he can hear me, if the, the, if the Council Chair can hear me, please take the floor. Yes, Honorable Speaker, I can hear you very well. Ah, please take the floor. Thank you. Honorable. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I just wish to welcome the oversight report on the impact of the COVID-19 on, uh, on women. We are bound to study these recommendations and obviously to adapt uh, appropriate actions. We are also concerned about the harassment of the women. And uh, we are also aware that the EAC Secretariat has set up a regional gender-based violence working group to gather information on such incidences uh, and obviously uh, appropriate interventions will definitely come through. And on this regard, I want to let the House know that there has been uh, one virtual meeting. Uh, also do not forget, Honorable Speaker, that uh, as a community we have a gender policy action plan and uh, of course it is being implemented. There are a few challenges here and there but uh, the implementation is ongoing. Uh, the Secretary also, Honorable Speaker, uh, Speaker had developed uh, simplified guides for micro and small-scale women cross-border traders and service providers. Uh, the same Secretary, Honorable Speaker, uh, Speaker, also developed a training manual on the EAC cross-border trade. And uh, in, based on this, uh, Honorable Speaker, the EAC Secretariat has already organized a few trainings here and there. But all these matters, Honorable Speaker, I wish to just conclude by saying that uh, we are fully uh, in the know and we are concerned and we are doing all that is possible to make that which we aspire to achieve as a community uh, achieved. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Ken Ubura. I want to be sure next time I address your title properly. Is it Deputy Cabinet Secretary or Chief Administrative Secretary? Chief, Thank you. Chief Administrative Secretary. Thank you very much. Standing in for the Chair of Council of Ministers. Thank you very much for your response and your presence. Thank so you. So, Honorable, uh, Honorable Francoise, now you can respond on behalf of the Chair of the Committee the issues that have been raised in the debate. Uh, thank you very much. I first and foremost uh, thank uh, the members that contributed to this report and supported it, and also the, the chair council. Uh, first of all, I wanted to make some comments and responses to the queries and the intervention. It's, it's, it's true that this report was really touching, 
Uh, Honorable Abdullah Fatuma uh, mentioned about even the statistics. It is very important to know about the big number of women uh, contributing to the GDP of EAC as a, a community, but also to the GDP of Africa as mothers. Uh, and we also proposed some amendment to, to the report uh, by saying that some countries uh, don't have a kind of the, the recovery plan as uh, it was observed in Rwanda. Hence, she proposed to, to integrate women concerns in the recovery plan. And this at the national levels and also at the EAC level. And uh, we are aware that we have uh, the recovery plan uh, under this COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, this is uh, at the regional level, but we have to, to, to look at it to see if the component of, of women, cross-border traders, all these issues raised under harassment, exploitation, are well, well, well recovered. And are well recovered and the recovery plan is concerning them. And also, uh, she mentioned about the relevant sectoral committee, I may say even sectoral council uh, of the East Africa, of the Council of Ministers, uh, to make sure all of these issues are also uh, reflected on and given special attention and feedback. And also, uh, she mentioned about a need for EAC to come with the EAC gender strategy to empower women across border traders and mitigate COVID-19 impact. And this goes together with the inputs of Honorable, Honorable Oda and Honorable Pamela, I may give feedback together. As you may be aware that at EAC level, there is the sixth now EAC strategy, uh, whereby a similar component talking of gender and community development was put in the strategy of EAC. The proposal of Honorable Pamela was to have a separate, a separate strategy uh, uh, talking uh, of women uh, to address specifically these issues because all these strategies at EAC level have, have, have been there. But they could not, even the gender policy, we have it, but it could not even bring back the two bills we can't now locate where they are. Uh, one of the bills is uh, ESC Women, Gender, Equality and Equity Bill that was passed on 8th of March in 2017 and it was passed by the, the, the House, this August House, third Ayala. But now we can't even know where it is, but I think uh, there is a way we can, we can get it because last time uh, someone mentioned that it was recovered, but we needed to know where, where it is. And even, even the gender female gender mutilation also bill. Yeah, so we need to, to bring those bills back so that we can make sure the strategy is taken care of, but make it a separate intervention. And also, uh, as I'm still on Honorable Ambassador support, she also talked about 50 million African women speak as a great opportunity to help women and entrepreneurs at the African level, and it is true to get information and marketing, and also we need to address the, the issue of women lacking internet. Honorable Sophie also talked about women lacking uh, mobile phones, smartphones, uh, so that they can get to, to information and also be able to transact their businesses and also to get training, because I've been talking of training, uh, with, with online training, so if they don't have internet, they don't have connection, so they have been missing all of these opportunities. Uh, and also, uh, I may also talk of the strengthening of the gender and community development department that uh, she mentioned that it, it only had the director of that department. Uh, she's not enough, even if she has some kind of two supporters, uh, but she needs to get more people so that we can give more attention to, to this department of... Uh, women and the uh, social sector in general. Honorable Oburu Odinga uh, also mentioned about the matter of life and death at the border. I was really also touched and appreciate uh, how he, he tried to, 
to make kind of evidence based experience. I like when when members are referring to their previous experience and on spot assessment to give their ideas, Mr. Speaker, where he talked about Busia border, Busia border and what is going on there. He has observed that they depend on women doing this business and he qualified them as being hard working ones. So this is really and I appreciate and the COVID-19 stopped the flow, the flow of business as he mentioned about it and also mentioned about COVID testing. So all of these issues combined, I, I, I thank Honorable Oboru Wajika for supporting the report and also uh, I like the way uh, he, he tried to give some examples of the good practices because what we are doing here is anchored in the, the common market protocol uh, and uh, where he said the, the use of the ID uh, to cross the border has been a, a, a good thing uh, and also uh, the fact that goods uh, with less than $2,000 a price were given a to, to cross but the, with this women are still facing issues to, yeah, to, to, to run their businesses and earn their outcomes as they wish and he proposed the introduction uh, to, to enable laws and encourage a head of state uh, to, to remove MTBs. I think this is can be also a recommendation to, to take in our report uh, to, 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 to urge the council also to, uh, to, to urge the head of state to, to remove MTBs rated uh, as far as uh, these women cross border traders are concerned. And we're not, not only talking of women. Honorable oh, Francois, we have only five minutes remaining. Thank you. I think you, you should utilize the two. You don't have to summarize everything everybody said. Uh, just uh, find a way to conclude. Yeah, Honorable Francine also brought in the, the good aspect that is a practical the recovery plan uh, whereby partners that they should implement uh, if they have got this. And also the on spot border, border post whereby the common market protocol is talking of the cold rooms. And let me emphasize on this because it's very important not having only cold rooms, but they don't even have infrastructure uh, to support the women. Imagine, Mr. Speaker, a woman trading, maybe in a menstruation period, may be pregnant, may be sick at the border, the other side of her or, or the, the, the country. What can she do? There are no infrastructure to support those kind of, of women doing the business. Honorable Lloyd Christoph. I talked of, of Maasai women are not being allowed to, to cross the border to, to another country. Uh, I can just say women rights are first of all human rights. What is being talked here is not only about women but human rights. So under the common market protocol, uh, this should stop and allow not only Maasai women to, to cross but all EAC people. Honorable Leontina also, when Honorable Nwai was uh, talking, mentioned something that attracted my attention saying women small-scale traders are not vulnerable women so they need to be supported so that they can increase their, their business yeah educate women to abandon the smuggling uh, and the pioneer routes uh, honorable Nwai, thank you very much uh, and uh, let, let me also mention about him honorable jean claude i, I have uh, got your recommendation and you appreciate your support uh, to the very concerned uh, by the sexual harassment and exploitation. Yes, can, can a member move to extend because uh, I think my advice hasn't worked. A member move to extend time so that we keep within the rules. Yes. No extension. Right now. Yes, so, right that, now. so that she can... Honorable Chris, that, that's not how we handle issues. Honorable Chris, right why? Speaker. I don't know, let me address the way Honorable Nduwayo responded to me. Okay. Uh, th th that's not the right way to deal with this. So, a member can move for extension of time? Yes, right, Honorable Speaker. Yes, Honorable Fancy. And a uh, second? I support the Honorable Speaker. So, those in Seconded. favor of extension of time for the chair of the committee to conclude, can you raise your hands? Some of Thank us you. do not have video, Thank right, you. Honorable Speaker. And uh, those against? Those in favor have it.
So, Honorable Francoise, can you conclude? <laughs> no, count, count, right on our speaker. Count, count. Honorable Francoise, conclude. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me then take away where we have got the recommendations only. Uh, and I, I try to just uh, add on that. Uh, let me take the recommendations from Honorable Order, uh, whereby she proposed to have uh, the review of EAC gender strategy and also add something like affirmative actions, uh, special programs for women in the informal sector, especially women in cross border trade. And the EAC to establish gender based violence one stop center at the border. Uh, what she called Isange, one stop center here as an example of Rwanda. And also periodically monitoring and reporting on implementation of EAC gender strategy and the gender monitoring office at the EAC level. And the, this can be part of the gender directorate. There is a way we can support the, the, the director of this department uh, to improve on the everyday uh, business transaction. <laughs> and also, Honorable Dr. Oda uh, said having conducted this activity before the celebration of Inter International Women's Day is a good thing. Hence, we need to give this a special attention to, to have the outcomes we'd like to have. And uh, the recommendation from Honorable Jean-Claude, together with the Honorable Dr. Warda, is about to uh, the, the, the committee to recommend to the Assembly to urge the Council of Ministers to investigate on the matter of sexual exploitation and harassment of women, those border traders reported at the border of Namanga and the border between Uganda and South Sudan, and take responsive action. Although it was highlighted in the report, but there is a way we can deepen it and make it a recommendation of follow-up. And one of Kamira also requested that we can redo an oversight activity the way we did it at the, the beginning of our, our mandate, our tenure, then we can redo it and to deepen what, what is in the provisions of the Commonwealth Protocol. It can, it can help. And uh, last but not least, I thank the the chair council are present and we appreciate the inputs and support and also as i wind up allow me to thank all the members that contributed to the to this report honorable ambassador fatuma honorable oburu ojinga honorable francine honorable nduwayo honorable sophie honorable jean claude honorable oda sinzingwa honorable pamela honorable dr oda and uh, I think no, then the, the chair council. Mr. Speaker, I submit and I thank all the contributors of the report. Yes. Um, now, honorable members, I wanted to, to put the question that the report of the committee on general purpose on the oversight activity to assess the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on women in cross-border trade in the EAC be adopted. Those in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Those against, raise your hands. Some of us, we don't have video, right, Honorable Speaker? Yeah. So are you in favor or are you not? In favor. Thank you. So those in yeah, favor in have favor. it. Those in favor have it. I also wanted to join you uh, to thank the committee, first of all, for a, a choice of a very important activity uh, that is topical in the times we are in, and the way you treated the activity itself. Also for, for the member who ha stood in for the chair, Honorable Francoise. I thank you all for the contributions you made and the council member also have made his, uh, his contribution. So this brings us to the end of our proceedings today and we shall adjourn until tomorrow at 2.30. The house is adjourned. I wish you a good evening. Good evening.